It is time to answer your questions at fantasyfootball at cbsi.com on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, and the Fantasy Cops are here. I can't express to you the amount of Fantasy Cops questions that we are getting these days. People have a lot of issues. And let me just say this. Stop vetoing trades. Stop doing ve- – don't veto trades because you think it's a bad trade. It's got to be so obvious that it's collusion or just completely awful if you're going to veto a trade. I, I can't – some of these trades get vetoed. And I'm like, this this person actually lost the trade. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I just uh, – you got to have better guidelines for your vetoes, people. No, no, don't veto a trade unless there is collusion. That's the guideline. No, it's not quite that simple. Like there, there's a trade we're going to talk about is Gerald Everett for Al- Alvin Kamara. I, I could almost get on board with a veto for that. There's trade. collusion. Obviously, That's there's collusion. collusion. It's a dumb trade. More collusion. Like if you're <laughs> paying attention to fantasy football in the year 2022 and you trade Alvin Kamara for Gerald Everett, it happens. Then Sometimes you should be paying. Right. Well, Kamara's coming off two bad games. All right. Anyway, I'm Adam. That's Dan. Hey, Jamie. Hey. Enjoying the show so far? Oh yeah. Okay, we got injury <laughs> updates for you, all your questions, and I'm in a great mood because I went to the local bagel place to get some lunch today, and they gave me two free croissants on the house. Oh, that's, that's always nice. You left your house? I did leave the house. And I thought you were going to say you are in a great mood because your lip wasn't bleeding yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have chapped lips. I was doing a live show today, HQ. And my lips started bleeding. I had Jamie. I had to go off the air for a few minutes. Yeah. To take care of it. It was embarrassing. I'm humiliated. So thanks, Dan. Thanks. That might me. be the first bloodshed in FFT history. That could be. Um, all right, let's do our news and notes. We got a lot of Ravens news here. Mark Andrews game time decision. Gus Edwards questionable with a hamstring injury, and Lamar Jackson has an illness, but he's going to start. So let's start with uh, the Mark Andrews likely thing here. If if Andrews is out and likely is in, Jamie likely would be where in your rankings? He would likely be in the top ten. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking Komet, Dulcich. Uh, who would he be ahead of? What's the other guy I was thinking of? Oh, Pitts. Ahead of Pitts, behind the uh, Ryermuth, Dulcich. Behind yeah. that tier. Okay. Got a lot of faith. Got a lot of faith in Greg Dulcich this week, don't we? Uh, hashtag Raiders. Hashtag Raiders. Right. You know who I didn't talk about on the on the Friday episode? I totally missed it. It's my bad. Elijah Mitchell. Um, how does uh Dan, how do you feel about Elijah Mitchell this week against the Cardinals? You know, they're eight point favorites. It seems like a good spot based on that. The game script should work in their favor to give him more carries, especially I feel like he'll be that guy down. If they're in a game this season from this point on the 49ers where they're up by multiple scores, 14, 21, I I just have a bad feeling McCaffrey managers are going to be pissed off about those games because I don't see the reason to play him much since they're in playoff contention in those types of game scripts. So this could be that. So I kind of like Mitchell as a flex, but. I'm sure we could look back on this on Monday and be like, what are you doing? He had like 3.6 boards. He had like 36 yards on eight carries or something. Uh, how about this Ravens backfield, Jamie, with Gus Edwards? I, I was almost under the impression that it was a bad, you know, because I knew he had been dealing with an injury, obviously. But is it something new? Is it a setback for Gus or just or just he has a hamstring injury that we knew about? The hamstring injury we knew about. That's what he missed. Got yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I just, I, I thought that it may have been a setback. Was that? Did I misinterpret that? I, I, I mean, if, if you're saying that, that's news to me. Okay. So I haven't seen it yet either. I, I think what you know, the expectation was that he was hoping good to re- the Ravens were hoping he would return after the bye week. You know, I think it, you know, and we've talked about this a little bit that they were so cautious with J.K. Dobbins, and it felt like they rushed Gus Edwards back a little bit from right off the pup list to having a huge workload that maybe they're going to learn the lesson and not necessarily rush him back to the same level. So it's why, you know, I think you've heard mo- multiple comments from our shows this week that we like Drake better than Edwards, but I think Edwards can still be a potential flex play this week. Okay. Yep. I think this is, I think I misinterpreted the tweet, which is okay because by the time you're listening to this, Twitter probably won't exist. <laughs> so, um, Let's see. Ezekiel Elliott is expected to play. We already talked about that. J.D. McKissick unlikely to play. Corey Davis is out. Juju Smith-Schuster is out. And David Njoku is questionable. He says he's playing. Yeah, he said that last week, kind of. I'm really interested. 
I'm really interested to see how this Chiefs game unfolds and how the Chiefs offense unfolds without Juju Smith-Schuster in there now. And obviously, McCall Hardman placed on IR earlier. The expectation is it's Tony time, Kadarius Tony time. But he did just join that team a few weeks ago. I'm not so sure we're going to see him 100% assume the McCall Hardman role or play like an incredible amount of snaps. I'm almost wondering if this is a really good spot potentially for Marquez Valdez-Scantling, though. That's another player that I feel like I could look back on on Monday and be like, oh, it's MVS. Why do we get excited about him again? This is a very interesting comment from a Giants guy <laughs> crapping on Kadarius Tony. Well, well, I mean, that's not crapping on him. I think you would say <laughs> that. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I feel like you might say that about anyone who joined the team like at that recently. But... I, I, I do think though that there, there's first off, he kind of played the Michael Hardman role last week against Jacksonville. Right. You know, it, it looked very similar to what Hardman had been doing. I mean, it's it's basically a month that he's been with the team at this point, and so yep. can he? Can he? do enough to be fantasy relevant? I think the answer is yes. Look at this comment, though. Now, I'm looking at the avatar of the guy making this comment, and he could break me in four pieces with that <laughs> muscle. But but what if that's not him, though? It's him. Uh, no, you're not benching DeAndre Hopkins for Kadarius Tony. No, no, no. That's going a little bit too far. Uh, would you bench Rondell Moore for Kadarius Tony? If Marquise Brown plays, yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Justin Watson, by the way, is the guy who really got a boost in playing time. He had not played more than 26% of the snaps in any game. He played 73% of the snaps against the Jaguars after the Juju injury, of course. He only had one target, so that's why we haven't really talked about him. But if you're in a super deep league and everybody is rostered, you could take a look at Justin Watson. And you can win a little bit of money. We got some prizes here. We got a $1,000 weekly prize in our pick them. And all right, so here's what you do. You watch football on Sunday and you get your CBS Sports app out or uh, you can go to the website. I'll give you a, a URL as well. But you play the CBS Sports football pick them. Get into the action this week to show off your knowledge with the chance to win the $1,000 weekly prize and the $100,000 jackpot. You can get started now at cbssports.com slash play or from the more menu on the CBS Sports app. Once again, that is cbsports.com slash play, or on the CBS Sports app. No purchase necessary. See rules for details. Why not pick some games, huh? All right, got our Apple Podcast questions. This one comes from Chef Joel Christie. Lineup help in full PPR. Uh, need a wide receiver and a flex from this group. Deontay Foreman, Cortland Sutton, Kadarius Tony, and he said Christian Watson, but... Let's assume Watson's not part of this discussion. Give me two out of three. Foreman, Sutton, Tony. Tony's the easy one. Yep. Sutton's the easy one, too. Yeah, I think Sutton showed enough last week that, especially given the matchup that Jamie referenced earlier, you, you play your players against the Raiders right now that it makes more sense to play Sutton there instead of Foreman. Especially if Judy's out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, is, by the way, that was Joel from a city between Pompano Beach and Deerfield Beach. Oh, is that Florida? Is that Florida yeah, area? Yeah. Was that is that between Cold Pompano Springs? and Deerfield? There's not much. Yeah, Coconut Creek. No, Creek would be north of Deerfield. Yeah, but Pomp isn't Pomp. Where's Pompano? Pompano south of Deerfield. Creek is like west of Deerfield. Pompano Beach and Deerfield Beach. It's a Man, very I small. Can't, yeah, I don't know. What's that? Uh, I don't know. That's like right where Anthony's is. What's Anthony's? Sounds like a good place. Oh, it's the best, best pizza ever. Best pizza. The best pizza ever it in is the state of Florida. Best. It's a chain. Oh they have God. one. In New it's York. a chain. It's, it's a it's small a chain? chain. No, it's a, it's a family owned chain though. It's family owned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that chain. It's, uh, it's oh. look, look. Obviously, uh, you know, New York pizza, Chicago pizza. Everybody's gonna have their opinion. It's probably the best pizza place. Arguably, the best pizza place down here. Oh, down there. That I can no, there was one in White Plains that I used to go to all the time. Unfortunately, it closed. It's as good as any New York pizza. Anthony's Coal Fire Pizza. The Where can I get it? There is are some. South, is, it, is, it near, is it near? Is it near uh, Fort Lauderdale? It's near. Yeah. We have one near our office. There's a bunch oh, okay. near Fort Lauderdale. Should have got that. We should have got oh, that. That day. Meatball, was meatball ricotta pizza, unbelievable, and the chicken wings. They have the best wings. The chicken right. wings are great. Yeah. This is from H. Sounds great too. H. Dink. Oh, it sounds. I give up Alan, Laz Alan Lazard and Jamal Williams for Amonra St. Brown. Grade the trade. Love it. Lazard and Jamal Williams? Yeah. No, no. It's, it's yeah, Lazard and Williams for Amonra. A plus. Yep. I'm giving it an A. Tyler, 
Full PPR 12 team league. I'm tied with four other six and four teams for second place. I traded CeeDee Lamb for Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith. That's interesting. Um, so he's four and four. So, at, right? Is that what? Oh, sorry. Six and four. Sorry. Four and four is not possible. But there's four other teams for second. You assume it's 12 teams. So, so six get in. Uh, I think I'm okay with this trade if you're in that position with 16, a 16 playoff. I think you have enough time to wait for Jamar Chase. And hopefully from this point on, Devontae Smith doesn't score too many fewer points. And, and there's a possibility, right, that Smith, we are, we're assuming A.J. Brown is the benefactor of the Goddard injury. I don't think any of us here think it's going to be a tight end on that roster. But it could be Devontae Smith. It's, we, it's unknown at this point. I think the thing you hope for is does Smith stay within striking distance of Lamb this week and then the reporter's chase is back next week. So, yeah. Oh, Jamie, is it Boca, by the way, in between Pompano and Deerfield Beach? No, Boca's north of Deerfield. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's Didn't so you our, grow up in Florida. Our Adam? producer, Zach Brooks, submitted that guess. Didn't you was... grow up in Florida, Adam? Yeah. And that's why, that's why I said Coconut Creek. I think it's Coconut Creek. I mean, it, it's hard because Creek is, is west of those yeah, cities. Yeah, it's west. Yeah. There's hmm. that lighthouse point. Could be. <laughs> okay. And here we are talking Florida geography on the Friday. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> All right. This is a trade. We from- go back to what we did on Friday where Dave and Adam talked about their crappy fantasy team. <laughs> well, like Every, everyone wants to hear about that a bad fantasy seconds. team. Uh, 12 team PPR league. I'm offering Juju and Pollard for Lamb and Mitchell. Which side would you rather have Juju and Pollard for Lamb and Mitchell? I would take the Lamb side. You got to take the Lamb side, of course. Yes and no. no. I mean, there's the Zeke thing. The only thing I think that sways it is you have the lottery ticket appeal of Mitchell. Right. So, you know, Juju, who knows when he's back? That's the you know big part of it, clearly. The lottery, you have the lottery ticket appeal of Pollard. Well, Pollard, I think, is ascended from the lottery ticket to he's basically a borderline must start guy at this point. So, you know, you're hoping like if Mitchell becomes the guy in San Francisco again, then you win that trade by a mile. Yeah, but if Pollard, it's much more likely that Pollard wins. It becomes that guy, and I'm not. I'm not looking at Pollard as as becoming what he has been because I know what I'm getting with him already. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I know Pollard is startable with Zeke at this point. Huge upside without Zeke. This is a trade where it's you have the second and third best players. You're giving them up for the first and fourth best players. Correct. That's fair. Yep. All right, from Johnny T. Half PPR super flex eight team league. I currently have Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, Fournette, and Gibson. Okay. And A.J. Brown, Waddle, Chase, St. Brown, Lazard, D.J. Moore, and Olave. Okay, so he's obviously better at wide receiver. Uh, who should I trade uh, to go for the win in my league? It's an eight-team league. He's deep at receiver. It could use a, another running back. He's got A.J. Brown, Waddle, Chase, Amonra St. Brown, Lazard, D.J. Moore, and Olave. In that type of scenario, I think, you know, because everybody's got a stack roster, you probably have to do some sort of two for one or, you know, to get a superstar player, I guess. You know, the, the thing I'd be looking at is does he have a stud tight end, you know, or a startable tight end? There's really only one stud. Um, a startable tight end. And what's his quarterback situation? Because, like, those positions could sway what your what your league looks like with the, the way how those positions have struggled this year. Yeah, and he has enough depth to really, if he wants to, package two of these players and try to get, like, see if you can get Kelsey in the mix. Okay, this is uh, from Grant Witcher. The subject is Adam and Dan spinoff pod. <laughs> this podcast is worth a subscribe to the banter between Adam and Dan on the Saturday mailbag alone. No lie, I would listen to a spinoff pod of them just roasting each other for bad things. <laughs> I included this because he then says, I for sure lean towards Adam's takes. What? On everything except movies. <sighs> Which is weird because Dan doesn't even watch movies. I don't even have movie takes. I do need to grade the trade, though. Uh, this is a keeper league. I need to know if I got fleeced or not. It's a lost season for me, so trying to improve for next year. I gave up. Joe Mixon, Juju Smith-Schuster, and a fifth-round pick. For Cordaro Patterson, Curtis Samuel, and a first-round pick. None of the traded players can be kept. All right, let's let me read through this. So yeah, he gave up, basically getting a first round pick. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. He, he gave a mix and yeah. juju in a fifth for Patterson, Samuel, and a first. And he says Samuel. I I'm guessing that's Curtis. If this trade is so bad, but if it's Debo, then that's a little bit different. 
Yeah, that changes the whole trade. Um, I don't think he got fleeced here. I think he's just, it's just, like you said, he's trading for the first. He's playing for next year. Yeah, I think the only thing would be is like you'd like to maybe get some sort of keeper in return. Yeah. You know, so like something I see, I always approach these situations like whenever you're trying to, you know, build for next year, like try and get as, as you know, you know, clearly each, each league is different, but like try and get a Jamison Williams, try to get a Traylon Burks, try to right. get, you know, even though they might not be superstars, they give you options because imagine we get to next August and Jamison Williams looks like a star. And right. The Lions have changed their quarterback situation. Or, or Traylon Burks, you know, is finally comfortable at the, at, as this season comes to a close. Or, or look at what Christian Watson has become. You know, I mean, imagine if you had just sucked to start your season and you traded for Christian Watson a few weeks ago. And now you have that. You know what I mean? Like, those, those are the type right. of things that help you go into the next season. So always try and get something, some young player that has a chance to maybe ascend their situation. Um, but, yeah, I think getting a first-round pick is never a bad thing. Agreed. Right. And I'll, I'll say one day, one day, and it might be Thomas, it might be Zach. I'm not sure who yet. I'll, I'll rely on them at some point. But one day we will need to audit Adam's process for, you know, reading comments and the YouTube page, reading oh. emails. It's, it's, anytime oh. anyone says something bad about Adam or good about another person, it never seems to get read. But, oh, are you kidding me? When that guy wrote the Adam bleep you email, I sent that to everyone <laughs> I knew. Behind the scenes, but I'm talking about on the show. All we hear, is, all we hear is, "Oh, Adam has the best takes. Adam has the best hair." But I even the Adam that. bleep you email wasn't like, uh, "Oh, this guy doesn't really like me." It's like, look how much this guy hates me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, true. About that. it's true. And I do have the best hair. I, I, well, no, Jamie does. But in this two man race, I said, uh, "Jamie, I don't know if you agree with this take." Dan has very high floor, low ceiling hair. Basically, has the same hair every time, every every day of the of the week. It's of called the, consistency, Adam. Yeah, very consistent hair, but he, you know it doesn't. You can't really do much with it. It's not. He what can't are you doing? What are we me. doing with your hair, Adam? Look at this. This is good hair. I got a haircut. You have like you have like the Corey from Boy Meets World haircut. <laughs> I would what say who has a better hair? <laughs> you really? Dan is Dan is like, what's the Dan is like a Curtis has Curtis Samuel hair. And I have Gabe Davis here. You do not have Gabe Davis there. <laughs> Give me what an break. insult to Gabe Davis. Um, uh, I Dan has better hair than you. Oh, thank get the you, hell out of here. You, 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 you would never you. give me credit. More, All right, this is yeah, from, let's uh, move on. from a name I can't. What do you think Frisco would say about you, both your hair? Oh, he yeah. Oh, Frisco is just happy to see any hair. Uh, dear Lion O, Panther. I won't, I won't say the, the name, but Frisco once made one of our. Uh, HQ talents cry because oh <laughs> so mean oh, he told so him mean. that he's going. He said, uh, "Pete is Pete is bald." He said, "You're coming to my club soon. Get ready." <laughs> Pete wants to crap on everyone's hair parade. Yeah, I understand. If I was bald, I, I I get that as a bald man. It's like the Larry David thing. It's like you can or the George the Costanza. You're you're hoping you don't want if you're bald, you don't want to see other people with great heads of hair. No, it's true. All right, so the question. Dear Lionel, Panthro, Tigra, and Snarf. Thundercats, come on. Thundercats, that is way before my time. Yeah, I know, but it wasn't before Jamie's. Non PPR. Yes, it was. Oh, don't look at that little slight joke on Jamie's age right there. Jamie's younger than you. Oh, I was my it was I was a Thundercats guy. Okay, okay. That's what Jamie likes to think I'm younger than him, though. Thank you. Yeah. Good look at uh, all right. Non PPR two flex. I'm nine and one. I have Josh Allen and Justin Fields, and I just lost Ertz. Okay. Traded Fields, Higgins, and Pollard Whoa. for Kelsey and ETN. Oh, hell yeah. That's an awesome trade. It's a one quarterback league? Yeah. It's a great trade. This is an amazing trade. How did you get ETN? I think that would have been an interesting move. Even if you just got Kelsey alone, I would have been like, maybe on paper it looks like you're giving a lot, but that's an interesting try to upgrade there, especially with uh, your quarterback situation set without Fields. But to also get ETN back is crazy. It's an amazing trade. Okay, uh, from M Hershey, and and listen, good on the other side too. Eh. Oh, this is from Matt. Matt from the biggest. Is well, it? to get to get if you don't have a quarterback, Fields is top five upside. I feel like me and you are at a different point with Pollard, uh, Jamie. I, I know what you're trying. I think he can be a weekly flex, but with with Zeke sucking up some of the touches, that at least if it goes according to how it went before the oh, injury. he's not ETN, obviously, yeah, right? But Higgins is no slouch. I mean, you know, you're no, getting it, three starters there. True. You can, you can compare this? the Higgins ETN side. 
Um, on paper, says, I'd like to report a murder on Adam's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I mean, I think he's talking about my my Corey from from Boy Meets World. Uh, I hope so, me. but I, I don't think the haircut was that bad. How would you? Oh, he means from that standpoint. Yeah. How would you? I love how you just got it. a haircut, and it's like all like, how is that not? How is that? A just haircut, it was not though? a very good haircut. I had to. I had you to. You said that the last time. I had to recut it. So here, oh, let, no. so so Dan, just to let you know, when Adam moved to New York for love. He oh. won in the love department. He lost in the weather department. He certainly lost in the haircut department because oh, yeah. he had a wonderful, wonderful yeah. barber. Yeah, uh, Jamie, Jamie's hair, hair stylist, Kelly. His hair never looked better than when I sent him to Kelly. Wow. She's the best. He was great. She's terrific. How I would just, you rank the hair of the of the five of us that are typically on show? Oh, you're uh, number one. Dave is number Heath? two. I just Dave's not number two. I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're number one. Then me. <laughs> then Heath, then Dan, then Dave, and then Chris. Uh, and Frank, Frank would probably be number two, but Jamie's definitely number one. No, right. Frank refuses to take his hat off. Right, when we did last year. I, I got to read this damn question already. <laughs> no more hair. Yeah, Matt's the season's going to end. Grade the trade. <laughs> I receive Jacobs and Debo Samuel. Okay. I give up Alvin Kamara and Kyle Pitts. Jacobs and Samuel, Kamara and Pitts. I think I like the Jacob Samuel side a little bit better, but. Samuel and Pitts to me are in a similar bucket right now. Debo, I just feel, Debo. yeah, Debo, Debo. I feel a little more confident about Debo, but not too much more. I think you're losing the best player. This problem, Kamara. Yeah, with Kamara, that's yeah, actually a good point. I'm going to give it a C. A it's, it's, C. It's not. It's not egregious. So I'd say it's fair. It's, C is a good grade. Average C from it's fantasy fine. player two. Trade away Foreman in full PPR. Deontay Foreman get Kittle. He's upgrading from Taysom yeah. Hill. I'm fine with that move. Try to try to go for it with Kittle. I just feel like with Kittle, what's here's what's going to happen. You're going to put him in your lineup the rest of season now that you traded for him. He's going to have maybe one, two, hopefully three blow up weeks. He'll have some frustrating ones like last week. But what are you missing, right? You're not whoever you're starting at tight end now is not having the blow up weeks and he's having the frustration weeks, maybe a little bit more consistently, probably not much. So I'm good with that. You just roll with Kittle rest of season and, and you know, hope the blow up weeks happen in the playoffs. This is Kittle's rest of season schedule. Okay, let's hear it. Monster week this week against the Saint, the Cardinals. Saints next week, so usage and matchup not great. Mm -hmm. Dolphins week thirteen, I think that's good. Bucks week fourteen, eh? Week fifteen, great Seattle. Week sixteen, shaky Washington. Seventeen Raiders, great. So more yeah. more favorable than not rest of the good week. Fan, good fantasy playoffs matchup too. Unfortunately, uh, you would like to see the Cardinals one more time before the season ends, but yeah. he gets them week eighteen. All right, next question is from um, this one's. Yeah, I don't think I can read this one. I'm sorry. All right, we got to take a break. <laughs> sorry. <about that. laughs> well, we got to let you off. do that. There's just somebody sitting around listening, going, I got, I, I finally sent Adam an email. All right, fine, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. <laughs> uh, from Amish Dorm Keen. I probably shouldn't have said I feel like I just said something that I shouldn't have said. Uh, 10 team Superflex League. I traded Jalen around week four. I traded Jalen Hurts to a desperate team for Eckler and Debo. That left me with Matt Ryan and Jared Goff. Then I traded Debo for Amon St. Brown. And then I picked up Justin Fields. My running backs are now Eckler, McCaffrey, and ETN. My receivers are Diggs, Amon St. Brown, Pittman, Sutton, Ayuk. Pitts is my tight end, and I am fielded Goff, Fields and Goff at quarterback. How did I do? He did Day amazing. Plus plus. Yeah, this is a really well, good example of building a team, an all-star team that you didn't draft. Like you traded, you did an excellent job trading for these guys. Obviously, it was contingent on picking up fields, like now a QB one rest of season. Right, that's the thing. You, you picked up fields. If yeah. you didn't pick up fields, then I'm not sure we'd be Having praising you. So I, I think the thing that I'm, I'm curious to see, because we get the end of season report about league winners, you know, who helped yep. fantasy managers win the most. I think you see a lot of either – Mahomes and Allen by the time things are said and done because of how they will end up performing and a lot of fields and Geno Smith. Right. Probably Tua too. Cause I think Tua was dropped during the concussion saga and picked up for probably right. a different fantasy managers. So I'll put two on that list too. So Tua fields and Geno Smith, because those guys were free in a lot of leagues. Who is the next guy that, you know, booms up that list at quarterback? quarterback? No, at any position. It's a Christian oh, Watson. Well, I mean, you can see Rashad White being that guy. Yes. Well, of uh, non-injury. 
Who's the I guy know, from this know, point on? Injury, injury is reason, usually the reason. Injury leads to opportunity. Like Ken Walker is going to be on that list, I think, end of season. But that was somebody who. Okay, fine. Injury, whatever. Right? Yeah. Who Who's the waiver wire pickup? Or that's you know, coming. Yeah. Or that. You know, yeah. I mean, I guess you could say Traylon Burks because he's available and just had a big game. You know, so yeah. maybe that's the guy. We could say Christian Watson. It would be well, Watson. Think, what are you trying to get? Who Who's available or who? No, already I mean, the guy that was you know just just coming on. Paris Campbell, right Christian now. Watson. Yes, yeah, Donovan people I mean, don't think Those guys all have Watson, be that Watson and Watson and Burks are the two. I talked about Burks on yesterday's FFT and five. Luckily, before the game, we recorded it. I said a big break. I was coming, but as far as not naming guys that were picked up this week, it would for me it would be Jamison Williams. From the last report I read, Campbell's hoping to get him around, get him back right after around that Thanksgiving game. So, hope, but. That's optimistic coach speak, but either way, if you could, they can get him rolling end of season, he could be a league winner. And and if that happens, Jared Goff. Yeah, right. That's a good point. There's no way Jared Goff is going to be a league winner. No way. Well, I mean, to, to look look what you said on two different shows on Friday on HQ and and the podcast about Aaron Rodgers. Can Jared Goff with Jamison yeah. Williams and, and Monroe St. Brown and Josh Reynolds get to 20 fantasy points consistently? Yeah, but I yeah. don't think Aaron. I don't think I was putting Aaron Rodgers in the league winner you know two no, but, but you know, again if you can get a, a consistent starter at the quarterback position at this point if you can't get a superstar yeah that's fine i i think uh i'm i'm got my fingers crossed that uh chris godwin could be in this mix they could just have this massive second half sure. you know, targets are there possible you know could, could now be, you're going on a different equation though different different not level really i mean i because <laughs> i'm just taking a break <laughs> okay, when we come back, the fantasy cops are resting. Jamie, and settling your, your league disputes. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Oh, yeah! Is that too loud? Not at all. Not okay. loud enough. The fantasy cops are here. I had so many today. Yeah, you so... screamed so loud, my ears bleed. Or maybe that's my lip. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I almost just cursed. I almost just four letter word. <laughs> Adam's just oh, ran, bleeding from random orifices on his body during the show. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't talking about just waiver wire players. I got backed into that corner of talking about just. I just meant who's going to have a huge second half and be a league. Well, winner. that's different then. Agreed. Well, maybe poorly phrased question. It was a spur of the moment question. <laughs> All right. Johan has a question for the fantasy cops. All right, Johan. Seven and three, two trades. Pitts for Kittle and Swift, and Everett for Kamara. Now, this actually is worded so weirdly. so weirdly that it actually may have been Swift and Everett for Kamara and just Pitts straight up for Kittle. That's probably what it was, right? Swift and Everett for Kamara. Still not bad, but not vetoable. And Pitts for Kittle. Oh, it is that. Yeah, no, that's what it is. It's Pittsburgh. It's None of these. Those. You can't veto either of these. Yeah, both were vetoed by the commissioner. Oh, I left the league. Horrible. Am I in the wrong? <laughs> no, you're in the right, Johan. And this is BS. And I hate commissions who do this. I hate leagues that do this type that's of thing. It. This is just. This is why I'm on a no veto path, Adam. Yeah, that's, for that's things just... like this. You can't. Well, tell us the... about your league again, Dan. What what happened? <laughs> <laughs> we have twenty minutes. Uh, no, I look. I just think there are some trades that that could be so bad, and there could be trades involving teams that are you know one in nine that aren't collusion, but should be vetoed. But all right, let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Okay, so oh, wrong. <laughs> My bad. Uh, fantasy cops for Ashton. There was an accepted trade that occurred on Thursday. Before the Thursday night football game started, one of the players in the trade, but this is last week, by the way, one of the players in the trade, DJ Moore, was playing on Thursday, and the member who had DJ Moore started him in his lineup after the trade was accepted. Now, our league goes by veto trade rules, and every member gets 48 hours to vote on a trade before it's processed. So basically, somebody traded DJ Moore, but then started him because the trade hadn't been processed yet. Because there was a player in the trade that was in the starting lineup, after the trade was approved on Saturday, it did not go through. This meant that I had to watch the other team member play the players that he was trading away in the lineup that week, get a W with their points in the lineup, and then still have the trade get approved on the following Tuesday. I asked before Sunday games to cancel the trade because I did not want the trade to go through if, I would not, if it would not go through before Sunday's games. 
the the commissioner basically told me to kick rocks and that I should have been watching the other team members line up to make sure he didn't play any players that he was trading away. Blah, 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 blah. I told the league that I didn't think it was fair. Are you guys following it or should I summarize? Yeah. No, I'm following. All right. What do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Please help so that I can understand and be knowledgeable in the event this would ever happen again. Has anybody actually like gone and kicked rocks? <laughs> I've never done that. I mean, I'll, I'll kick rocks when I'm walking around, but like I wouldn't <laughs> like if somebody go kick rocks. I wouldn't go kick rocks. No, I wouldn't. Um, so this policy is stupid. Yes. First off, I if if you make a trade and this is the policy, you can't tell the person who is holding the players you can't use those players. Like that's his his or her discretion to still use those players. They can't. Oh, I'm just going to bench them. Right. This guy Ashton's problem was that. He wasn't getting DJ Moore for that week, and he wasn't, and and because it got vetoed for that week, for week uh, nine, ten, a uh, ten, right, for week ten, he wasn't even allowed to use the players that he was trading for on Sunday, and they said, okay, the trade's not going through until next week, and then you can have those players. So he said, why am I doing a trade when I can't have any of the benefits for week ten, and you're telling me that I can't just cancel it? Instead, it's going through in week eleven. That's like the worst possible scenario. It's, yeah, I, that, that's, that's pretty stupid. Like it should have been the trade. The trade goes through regardless of when the player plays. Yes. Also, it's the commission has power to edit the lineups, and retroactively speaking, he can do it as well. If a trade is agreed on before the start of the games, I think that trade should, be, especially if you're in a league without vetoes, which it should be every league basically, unless there's collusion, then they should just push that trade through, and the commission should ed- like retroactively edit the trade to have it right. how these people agreed to before the game. They agreed before the Thursday game, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and the worst thing to do is to say no, it's vetoed now on Saturday until. Next to until Tuesday, right? The game. I mean, it's the worst solution. That's terrible. Yeah. So your commissioner really screwed you. And Ashton should have been allowed to have the player. Yeah. Why are there so many bad commissioners out Terrible. there? Come on, step your game up, commissioners. Terrible commissioners. Like I have this one commissioner who set the trade deadline for week nine <laughs> in two leagues. Are you obviously blaming? This one is a me? shot at Jamie. <laughs> That's Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Which leagues? Maybe just one league actually. Uh, two QB league or super flex league. I don't even look at when those deadlines are when we start the season. You should have told me. Uh. I yeah I guess, um it's all right. Look, I had enough time to make trades. Okay, uh this is from Scott. Oh, from Scott Sterk. <laughs> Afternoon fantasy football. I couldn't think of better people to bring this situation to. Hopefully, this is good enough for the fantasy cops. Hmm. Last night, our league commissioner and I got into some fine details about our league. We are a twelve-team private league, a core group of friends with a couple friends of friends. Unfortunately, this year we had to ban a manager mid-season. This comes to my point of awarding prizes. We have four prizes. First overall, second overall, first in the regular season, and the highest single game overall score. The banned manager is the current individual high single game score. If it holds to the end of the full season, the prize will need to be reallocated. He also has a chance to make the playoffs. His his roster is like... Uh, minimally maintained to stay relevant, but there's a chance he could win the league or finish second. So we have two different opinions on the prizes. If the band man, the commissioner suggests this, if the band manager's team wins second, first place gets all of the prize. If the band manager team wins first, second place gets all the prize. Okay. So that obviously means if the band managers in the finals, the other team is getting the prize, no matter what. Right. Uh, for the highest single game overall prize, that is undecided. Now, I, the guy writing this email, Scott, think that any prizes won by the band manager's team should be rolled into the following season. Mm. Uh, as a sidebar, the second individual highest single game score is the opposing manager in the same game as the band manager. Uh, does that say eh, whatever? So what do you guys think should happen with the prizes? I like how they are doing it right now. I don't think you should go roll it over because it's then you're taking, you're making the season pointless for the league just because you had to ban one manager. You're kind of letting them, the band manager win for whatever. We don't know the behavior of this band manager. We're just assuming that that band manager was in the wrong, but why are we rewarding? Like, it just doesn't make sense. You're, you're, you're making the season moot. Um, if you don't give out prizes, just because no, just, you, just the prizes that would go to him. Yeah, but that could be the first prize. It could be. It's, it's unlikely. What's so funny. <laughs> 
So I was uh, dealing with a, a, a family issue via text. So I didn't hear the beginning part of your question. You kept saying band manager. I'm trying to figure out like, <laughs> <laughs> like a yeah. band, like a band, <laughs> the band, the manager of a band. Yeah. I did say band. I did say band manager way too many times there. You did <laughs> <laughs> way too many times. BM, I was going to just not answer, but then when you finally BM. said that he was banned, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that the, the, ba the band manager, yeah. Uh, I was like, did, did somebody not, die? Like, was there a band manager who died? Yeah. Should not uh, get any <laughs> prizes, obviously. No, I would just give it. Okay, okay. What's the name of the band? I would give the the single highest game score. Yes, I would give it to the person who has the second highest score. Why don't they just put it in the pot and have a party for the next draft? You could do that. Well, that's what they're saying. Yeah, put it in the pot. Oh, <laughs> I see. And make the next draft better. And yeah. I like that idea, too. That's fun. I don't I, I hate the idea of giving it to the first place team. Or if the you know, I hate the idea of if the band, the the guy who got kicked out is uh, in the championship round, then the, the other <laughs> opponent gets all of the money. I think that's silly. So uh, I would, I'm really more interested in finding out why this person was banned. Me, too. Uh, all right. Let's last one here. <laughs> From a first-time writer, but a tenured listener. Thank you. This you trade said writer or writer? <laughs> <laughs> this trade was proposed and accepted in my 10-team PPR league. It is between the 10th place team and the 8th place team. They're both on the cusp of making the playoffs. One team, 10th uh, place team gets Kittle, Lamb. See, like, look at this trade. This trade is so lopsided. Okay. Kittle, Lamb, Chase, and the Bills DST. The eighth place team gets Ertz, Gibson, Sutton, and the Saints. Uh, it's obvious that the last place team is throwing. Did I say? Uh, yeah. The last place team is throwing the season, and some sort of collusion has happened. I think I said, said the, the eighth place, place team, team got the worst. Yeah, place. I said gets instead of gives. So, sorry. The, the last place team is getting Ertz, Gibson, Sutton, and the Saints. And giving up Kittle, Lamb, Chase, and the Bills. Yeah. Commissioner's so, on the fence to veto the trade, but I am all for the veto. This like, feels like I'm going to help my buddy try and make a run. It, it is that, and we know that. We we're not. No, we stupid. don't know that. Okay, we're not what stupid. We don't think so. Here? We, we don't. We need a. There's a burden of proof. They traded for somebody who's out for the season. I mean, come on. We know that something fishy is going on here. The problem for me is like a veto doesn't do it for me. Like, yes, you may have to veto in this spot, but I'm more important. I'm more concerned with getting rid of the team that did this. Why would we risk the repeat of this happening next year if this person falls out? Of it? Know, we got to well, answer the question here, though. I guess I guess the, the question thing that you don't know is like we, we play in obviously a lot of leagues that most people know what they're doing. In our competitive, some people play in leagues, office leagues, right. things like that nature. You know, you ask somebody to be in the league and they've never done it before, and they don't realize that the players that you're getting in return are that crappy because they haven't been paying attention. You know, so okay. there's there's probably a reason that that person was in tenth place despite all those talented players, maybe not setting their lineup the right way, maybe not paying attention. So I don't want to necessarily say it's collusion, but it feels that way. And so before you kick somebody out of the league, dictator Dan. Uh, you might want to at least understand some of the circumstances, but this this trade should probably be vetoed because I I would think that the it, ten team league or twelve team league, whatever the case may be, um, the other managers are looking at that and saying if this person gets in the playoffs because there's I'm sure there's other good players in that roster, that just feels like you help stack somebody's team. Yeah, I think the more I've thought about it, I'm leaning against against vetoing it unless you can prove there was some type of collusion or the tenth place team is just giving up. Again, They're a husband and wife, Adam. <laughs> For those of you who don't remember, it was a uh, it was Ertz, Gibson, Sutton, and the Saints DST for Kittle, Lamb, Chase, and the Bills DST. I mean, Gibson's been pretty valuable. Judy's hurt, so Sutton's got some more value. You can't you justify. Come on. I, I no. mean, I can. Kittle hasn't been that good. Chase, Chase is injured, and we don't know. Justifiable. All right, I would not veto it, but it's a really bad trade. All right, let's read our emails at fantasyfootballcbsi.com. This is from Anthony. Okay. It says hi, Jalen, Daniel, Taylor, and Dakota. Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of a Dakota. NFC East. What's the oh Dak? His Dak. real name's Dakota. Yep, yep, yep. Daniel Jones. Taylor Heineke. Daniel Jones. That's the first one. Not Jalen Hurts. Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> 
desperate RB2. Uh, full PPR, RB2. Pacheco, Warren, or Gus? I'm on Pacheco of this group. I'd probably go Warren with the three catch potential there. But it wouldn't surprise me if Pacheco's better. So if you want to just, for continuity sake, we can go Pacheco. Dan, what do you think about my uh, Colts over Eagles upset pick? What? You yeah. went from literally, this is a, what a wild turnaround for you. Four days ago on Monday's podcast, you literally did a breakdown game by game of schedule. I, I can't see a potential loss. This team's going undefeated. <laughs> now you're predicting they lose two in a row, including one against. Well, Center. okay. What's Just, changed since then? They put another defensive tackle on IR and Dallas Goddard's on IR. They got two play. defensive tackles though. Oh, well, yes, they got two old old guys who haven't been playing. You don't, you, you don't get to excuse yourself based on two injuries. Like, this is the, 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 the injury. That's a big deal. Adam, you, you couldn't find a loss, and now you're predicting two in a row. Okay, I'll let you make that change, but this is a terrible pick. That was a one win Jeff Saturday's team is going to get. Now they're going to go right back down to earth. We're going to be second you're guessing. The Chiefs at home this year. I know. That was an ugly, disgusting game by Andy Reid. That he, he still has those games in his bag, Reid. And that was a classic like Eagles Reid type of uh, coaching game. So, no, that's not going to happen this week. Eagles. The, uh, the band manager. <laughs> what kind of music is it? <laughs> blues, classic blues. All right, this is from Did Jay. you make a mixtape of it? I would. Uh, who do you want to stash rest of season? Pacheco, Jalen Warren, or Kyron Williams? Warren. Got to be Pacheco. Oh, I'm on Warren, I think. See, I think you just go with the best team there because, I mean. That's fine. That's fair. It, but is, I just don't. Is there a path? Pacheco doesn't need an injury right now. That's the thing. Pacheco doesn't need an injury, but I also think that there's at least more of a path for Warren if Najee gets hurt. I don't know that the that the Chiefs situation could actually unfold where Pacheco gets into that like RB1 role, but maybe. He might have got it last week. Yeah, but you still have McKinnon mixing in so much there, even in the oh, I, I mean, yeah. I don't think any scenario is perfect without an injury. Um, but what if McKinnon got hurt? Yeah, it's possible. But you, I still think they'd use – I weirdly still think they'd use Clyde Edwards. I would, I would agree 100%. Yeah. But it's such a bad Steelers team still. It is. It's still a horrible Steelers team. So it's hard to get – not too excited about either. I don't understand this poll. What's this is the what second is time I've lost this poll. <laughs> so who has better hair poll? Oh, I mean, you lose because it's quite obvious that this is better than that. It's not like I told <laughs> I you before agree. we started. Before we started this debate, I was like, I don't ask for much, right? Uh, you're a better looking guy. You're a better oh, analyst. Stop. You're a better host. It's fine. All that stuff is fine. You're in better shape. Yeah, it looks like he's been working out too. I finally started working out a little bit, which is good. Yeah, but, I know. When I met Dan, I was a little impressed by the physique. He's, he's like, uh, he's <laughs> I think uh, that was before I was working out. In terms of the hair. His hair looks like he has a purpose. Exactly. You look like you just woke up and decided. Right. Yeah, it looks yeah, this good without any purpose. Like, who doesn't? Good. But who doesn't even take a comb to it? Adam doesn't even take a comb to that thing. This is what. So Adam sits down every uh, show. Usually, see, you get the benefit, Dan. He's already been on TV, so <laughs> yeah. he, he's he's done something to his hair. So no, this is the something. I haven't but, done it. But usually in the mornings. He sits down. He does like this for like thirty seconds. And, yeah. like... <laughs> and and when I sit down to do the show in the morning, it is basically the first time I've looked at myself. Like I guess you, you know. I, wake, so I, wake you up, I was just gonna say. So he no, just admitted he doesn't brush his teeth in the morning. Pee, but then I brush my teeth in the kitchen sink. Uh, what? Yeah, you that's are the strangest human being. Yeah, alive. that was the strangest admission you may have ever met, made on this show. I have been, can you explain the process yeah. of why you brush your teeth in the sink? In the kitchen I would sink? love to. Okay, because I have slept on my couch for four months because what? of that craziness that happened in my son's bedroom. He sleeps in my bed, and I have been out out of my room for four months. It sucks. So oh, that is that, why that really sucks. It sucks. I sleep on the couch. Is I go pull out couch at least. No. You sleep on just every night. You sleep on a, and that oh my, your That's back, terrible. your back must be on the brink of collapse. I hate my management company so much. I want, I, want <laughs> to I hate them. I'm going to destroy them one day. All right. Anyway, here's a question from Trevor: Who do I sit? Rondell Moore, Cortland Sutton, Gabe Davis, or Kadarius Tony? Who do I sit? Definitely not Tony. So Rondell Moore, Gabe Davis, or Sutton? I will sit in that bunch. I'm going to lean towards sitting Rondell Moore here, personally. Definitely not Tony. That's interesting. No, definitely not Tony. I think I would sit Tony. 
Eh, maybe that's it, Sutton. Nah, there's too many injuries there. Amy, what do you think? Who do you sit? More Rondale, Sutton, Gabe Davis, or Tony? Sorry, I'm doing a poll here. Do you brush your teeth in the kitchen sink? Of course. <laughs> I don't want to brush my teeth in the kitchen yes, sink. I hate, no. I hate my life. You don't understand. Like, I hate yes, yes, no, I also don't know why you still can't, like, go up to your room and just brush your Like, but so what you had. Sleeping. The kids are sleeping in there. Okay, that was a good. The kids sleep past you? Oh, they they slept till almost eleven today or ten thirty. Oh, you have older kids, I guess. No, they're two and four. <laughs> they're insane. They go <laughs> to sleep at eleven thirty. It's like they're weird. what? It's insane. I have a, we have a crazy life. <laughs> um, all right, who'd you sit, Jamie? Rondale Moore, Corlin Sutton, Gabe Davis, and Kadarius Tony. Um, uh, had to sit one. Yep. I would probably sit Rondale if Marquis plays. I could brush my teeth in the bathroom, but I, you know that's they, what I'm saying. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> you could still brush your teeth in the downstairs bathroom. Downstairs bathroom, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know what you have to go to the <laughs> kitchen <laughs> sink. Brushes in the kitchen, so you just like that open sink, you know. I do like I do like the open space. Yeah. Uh, uh, Eleven votes in. Do you brush your teeth in the kitchen sink all the time? Nine <laughs> percent yes. Whoa. Forty-five percent no. Forty-six percent only Adam Azer does it. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right, right, this is uh, Joe. I'm the Kelsey manager. I have no backup. Heaven forbid Kelsey gets injured. Would it be better to take a guy like Conklin, Tunyon, or Hooper, or just pick up No, oh, Wait, wait, hold on a second. If you brush your teeth in the kitchen sink, where do you pee? In the bathroom. So you do go to a bathroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have, but the toothbrush is in the kitchen. I know, but you could leave it in but that bathroom. No, I wouldn't leave it in the bathroom. In the bathroom I would not. Right? Yeah, why, why would he leave a toothbrush in a bathroom, Jamie? A toothbrush doesn't belong in a bathroom. Why I don't have a medicine cabinet in that bathroom. And the kids are in that bathroom all throughout the day. They would knock it over. They would knock it over five times a day. There's no question. You, you could put it in a cup off to the side. No, they, it's, this very, it's a small bathroom. It's a very small bathroom. There's not enough room. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, I this has been one of our... <laughs> weirdest shows i'd say yeah. all right well, so that's because you're an alien yeah i'm a weirdest guy i i, well, I you were created in a lab i'm a very weird guy so um, am I, adam it's okay it's okay to let your weird so you, fly. you have a bathroom it has a sink but you brush your teeth in the kitchen yeah <laughs> how does this man work for cvs and someone who's he talking about i don't know Me, of course okay. yeah he's how, someone in the chat said how does this man work for cvs <laughs> It's a great question. Where do I shave? I I, sh- I pair uh, every now and then. I can miss. <laughs> the garden knows. <laughs> <laughs> These are good. Um, You're saying Adam, Adam needs to shave. I don't eat cold pizza. Oh, I eat cold. I'll eat cold pizza. Love cold I, pizza. I'll tell you what. I would eat cold pizza every damn time over microwave pizza. I will never microwave oh, pizza microwave. in my life. Let me I do not, I'm, di- I'm disgusted by people. Who yeah, microwave pizza is bad. Let me tell you, I terrible. actually got this tip from a YouTube chat. Okay. Someone told me to put my pizza on the cast on a, iron. On a, yep, yeah. on a pan, yep. medium heat. Yep. For a few minutes, it is the best, best way to best. reheat pizza is on a pan, especially if you have a cast iron. All right, we're going to do, olive oil, that's gonna do no BS, just fantasy. No, we just got, I got a, uh, we got a celebrity response to your uh, tweet, to my, right. my poll. Okay. Uh, Jessica Kleinschmidt, who covers uh, uh, baseball, I think, in the Bay Area. She says, defending you, I do it sometimes when I'm running around the house in the morning and it's the closest spot. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Somebody okay. else replied only on very, very rare occasions. Somebody called you a psycho. <laughs> Reed. Um, Good news, though. We're probably about two weeks away from the bedroom being back and me being able to sleep in my bed. Wow. So looking forward to that. All right. Kelsey manager wants to know if he should roster Conklin, Tunyon, or Hooper if Kelsey were to get hurt or a backup tight end on the Chiefs. I am actually advising for, and this is a player I picked up in almost all my leagues. It didn't cost much on the FAB yet, and that's uh, Trey McBride. I talked about it, I think, two shows ago. Maybe it was with Chris. I like McBride's profile coming out, and it's weird. In a lot of ways, he reminded me of Ertz because what he is best at is finding those soft spots in the zone. He was never an overly athletic player at Colorado State, didn't run a great 40, but he does a great job of using his body to box out. And so that's it. it basically exactly what Kyler found with Ertz. So he's the tight at high upside tight end stash I'm going to suggest here over all, all those other names. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more because you're looking for upside. You could argue Conklin may have – Similar type of upside because when the Jets have thrown this year, his numbers have been there. 
the thing that concerns me about McBride is, and this would have concerned me about Ertz, okay. is with Marquise Brown back, is there enough targets to go around for him to still be viable? But I think, again, if you're looking for who can be a difference maker at that position, these are the type of players that could be difference makers because of, of the scenario. And, and again, I agree with you on the profile. Like they, they've tried to make the argument after the game, like he ran all these routes and he didn't get targets. Like the, I didn't understand that. Like I know me, just, he's, not, he's the fourth guy in the pecking order. Like, agree how, again, how, like, how well, but that's only for now, right? Like we don't know if that's going to be the case down. down he gonna, he's going to have more targets than Rondell Moore. It's, it's a, a, it's it's a, a kind of target about well, having more targets than the guys that you mentioned. Yeah, number one, but also it's the kind of targets he can give oh. them. He can do something that even more can't do in my mind in that offense, just yeah. using his body to box out and find spots in the zone. Like <laughs> this is what he, <laughs> the guy he's on the top it. left, he looks like a rat. What? I don't, he might be talking about me. To be no, honest. I'm on the top left. You're on the top left for us, but for them, is it it's is it flipped on YouTube? No, I mean when they're looking at it, I'm on the top left. He says the guy in the top left has awful takes and he looks like a rat. Because someone once told me I looked like a rat before. Oh, maybe it is you then. All right, I'm fine. But I don't know if they were referring to like my actions. Yeah, whatever it is, that's just not that's just rude. Yeah, that's pretty messed up, man. <laughs> There's a right. lot of messed up comments in the now YouTube. listen. Here we go. Now nothing but fantasy. No, no, nothing. listen, listen, listen. That's time. rude. No, but wait, if you oh, if you write on. back and you and you curse at him, he'll love it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Okay, uh Christian from Middletown. Who should I start? Dear Ed, Ed, Eddie in the plank. I don't know. Is that the TV show Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Probably, right? Who should I start this week? Pick two and half PPR. Montgomery, Gibson, Garrett Wilson, Rondell Moore, Paris Campbell, or Hollywood Brown? Montgomery, Gibson, Garrett Wilson, Rondell Moore, Paris Campbell, Hollywood Brown. Mm. Needs two? Yep. What's the, what's the score? Half PPR. Uh, Montgomery and... Gibson, Gibson, Garrett Wilson, Rondell Moore, Paris Campbell, Hollywood Brown. Montgomery and Gibson. I can't even find this question right now, so I'm struggling to – you just name them too, too fast. Montgomery, yeah, Gibson. <laughs> Garrett Wilson, Rondell Moore, Paris Campbell, Hollywood Brown. Montgomery. And and this full-point PPR? <laughs> it's the band next manager again? Question, next question from Nicholas. <laughs> Uh, I want to try to turn Justin Fields into a running back. I was thinking about targeting Joe Mixon as the Mixon manager has Daniel Jones. Any advice on what I should do uh, offering Justin Fields? See, this is the perfect way to phrase a question. Look at the, in, in, in this general statement, look at the team that has crappy quarterbacks. Like, don't just, I want to turn Justin Fields into a running back. You got to attack your league. Attack your league by looking at the, the, the roster grid looking at who needs quarterbacks, then finding their best running back or second best running back. So the Daniel Jones manager, the Tom Brady manager who's been struggling, the Kirk Cousins manager who may not be sold on on that but has running back depth. Like that's the type of thing that you should be looking to make, like not just a blanket statement. So yes, if Daniel Jones has Joe Mixon and other running back depth, then you could turn Justin Fields into Joe Mixon. Perfect. Yeah, and you could throw in a running back there too, and I still think you're getting the better end of that deal. What's the lowest running back you would accept for Joe Justin Fields? <sighs> Um, it's so dependent though, because like, if, if I need, if I need somebody like in a desperate situation, like I'd be looking at Antonio Gibson or something like that with something else. I would say Fournette and Connor is the range for me. Oh man. I don't know. I but this like is also dependent on who your quarterback, like I'm not going to trade Justin Fields unless I already have a Jalen Hurts, a Patrick Mahomes and one yep. of the top tier guys. All right. Next question is from Cameron. Um, I trade away. Dalvin Cook, Kelsey, and Pittman. Okay. I get Jonathan Taylor, Dalton Schultz, and Mike Williams, but no Jonathan problem. Taylor and Jonathan Taylor would be a keeper. The other ones wouldn't. So he is probably losing the trade, but he's setting He's definitely up. losing the trade, I think. But he's saying, I have good points scored, but I'm still in last. So he probably has a still long shot at best to make it, even with the top point scored or whatever it would be. So he would get the tiebreaker if he still against that six spot or whatever it is, four teams. So I think you're you're better off doing it the way you did and going for the keeper. You're in that mode right now in last place this deep into the season. All right, good stuff. Um, this is from Charlie. Hey, Manny, Diego, Sid, Crash, and Eddie. I don't know what. Crash Bandicoot. You know this one? Manny, Diego, Sid. Crash and Eddie. Uh, I mean, uh, Bull Durham is the only crash I know. 
Should yeah, that's what I thought too, but then I Googled it. It's a Disney movie. Or Pixar or something. Huh. I don't know. It's Ice Age. Never seen it. Um, the question is, how do you rank these guys rest of season? Non PPR. Gus Edwards, Jeff Wilson, Rashad White, David Montgomery, Elijah Mitchell. Non PPR. I am going Wilson to get one. Wills, yeah, Wilson, the definite one. Over Montgomery. Montgomery? Yes. Non PPR. Well, All right. I love Wilson rest of season. Montgomery too. I think with Wilson, are we not? Is it is it possible at least at this point um, we're seeing the same situation we saw last year with the Bills for a little while, with the Bengals for a little while, and with the Chiefs for a little while, which is defenses are now playing more of a two high shell. Defenses are not only playing two safeties off, but they're playing their corners. I was watching the Titan, I mean the Dolphins film from last week against the Browns. Corners are playing so far off these receivers right now because they don't want to get burned deep by Hill and Waddle. And what is that going to do? It's going to lead to all these rushing opportunities and light boxes. And so Wilson, to me, I know he's somewhat splitting with Mostert at this point, but he's getting most of the snaps. I think he has a chance to be one of the better running backs, like outside of the top 12, at least like as we're talking about that RB two range rest of season based on this. So he would be the clear one for me as well. And then we go Montgomery. I would put in white based on the upside Mitchell and then Edwards. So if you're talking about league winners, the yeah. rest of the season, non waiver wire guys, that mm -hmm. could be good that you might've added already. That could be special. <laughs> okay, I get where you're going now. <laughs> Very good. All right, this is from Matthew. I need to bench one of these guys. Darnell Mooney, Chris Olave, Debo Samuel, Kadarius Tony. Who do I bench? Mooney. Um, I could go either way with Samuel or Mooney. Debo's going to have 100 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> I'm, I'm down on him. Uh, from Vinny. Who would you start of the following three? Gus Edwards, Jer Jarek McKinnon. Which of these three youths would you start in full PPR? Youths, I like it. That was one of the only movies I've seen. Oh, good. It's a great one. Ever. Gus <laughs> Edwards, Jarek McKinnon, or Elijah Mitchell? Uh, full PPR, so McKinnon. Which two? I mean, again? Three. Uh, which of these three? Just one. Gus Edwards, Jarek McKinnon, Elijah Mitchell. McKinnon for me. Done with Gus Edwards. Yeah, Done same. with that guy. Give me McKinnon. All right, YouTube Both questions. PBR. Start Jalen Warren or Tristan Ebner? Warren. Oh, Warren, yep. Rashad White or Elijah Mitchell rest of season? It's always going to be White for me Yeah. in this in this scenario. Okay, keep coming with the questions here. Who would rather rather rest of season? Can we show the poll results that you referenced but then didn't show for some reason? Uh, Montgomery or Foreman? I don't know. <laughs> Your hair? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, this is horrible. I'm having the worst. The, the results are, I can understand them, but we don't get to see him. Whenever anyone says a comment about me or a, or a good I one about Adam. I, they favored you. I told you the result of the poll. 58% Dan, 42% okay. Adam. It's stupid. Ah. Makes me never, ever like take these polls seriously. <laughs> Montgomery or Foreman, rest of season? Uh, Montgomery, for sure. Um, yeah. No? I go Foreman. Full PPR, who do I start? Chris Olave. By the way, Foreman, have have either have neither of them had their bye? They both have week 14 bye. Yeah. Um, so does the rest of the league, basically. All right, full PPR. Olave, Ronda Moore, Paris Campbell, or Jacoby Myers. Who are you starting? Jacoby. I'm gonna go Olave. If Marquise Brown doesn't play, I'm going Ronda Moore. We well, find out split on that one. Marquise is playing. I'll go Olave. Wow. This I, is first a... of all, I want you to know something. I did not select that comment. Well, who did? Zach. Yeah, Zach. You know what, Zach? We got to talk. That was Chris, though, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> In a red with a football team. Uh... 12 team half PPR. One running back, one wide receiver, one flex. Tony, Pittman, Slayton, Swift, Gus. Tony and Pittman are the easy ones for me. Um, so you got to go, I guess, Gus. Over Slayton and Swift? I'm going Slayton. You can't play Slayton. You got to play running back. So I'm going oh, Tony and Pittman. Sorry, you're right. You're going Gus over Swift. Sw I'll go yeah. Swift. I can play whoever the hell Swift, I want. The thing about Swift is that he's he should be the better of the two. The Giants have allowed the fewest receptions to running backs. So uh, most, my math is bad. Most they, yards I, per catch. Huh? The most yards per catch. 
I don't care if they're only catching. <laughs> they've given us twenty. I just don't but... believe anything with the Giants' defense. I don't believe a thing that they've done. Do you believe that the Panthers' defense is worse than the Giants' defense? No. It's better. Really? Well, I mean, the Giants' defense without McKinnon is is a big deal. McKinnon. Their run defense, though. They run defense. Well, no, but this is a Swift question. Like Swift, but that's why I think the yards. Swift is not running routes outside. The, but but the yards per catch to running back things is is relevant because it doesn't take Swift much to, you know, be good, as we've seen. I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue. Like I'm I'm not gonna make the case for DeAndre Swift. It's not a fun case. It's to a make. hard case to make. Yeah. Who are you flexing? Michael Pittman to Kadarius Tony or George Pickens? Pittman. Um. Yeah, Pittman's fine. The volume, I trust the volume there more more than the other two. Play it, play it, play what? Oh, what's up, a fifteen? No, uh, that's the what wrong that? thing. That was a Jacob Gibbs sound uh, from <laughs> two years ago, I think. Uh, I can't play it. I'm sorry. What are you playing? Uh, Pittman. Yeah. Would you trade DK Metcalf for Chris Godwin? Yes. Yeah. Fields, Herbert, or Jackson? For Fields. this week, Fields. All right, that's it. For sure. All right, here's the poll update. You ready? Oh, yes. I have a headache. From this crazy show. Go you ahead. You should, you should go get some water from the toilet. Um, <laughs> 988 votes. 988 votes. Do you brush your teeth in the kitchen sink all the time? 5% yes. 57% no. Hmm. 38% only Adam Azer does it. Yeah, it really is something I expected only Adam to do. I don't brush all the time at night i sometimes don't brush in the sink <laughs> it's in the mornings wait, wait 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 does that mean you don't brush at all no it means i sometimes i'm actually able to go upstairs and brush my teeth in the, in the bathroom but what i don't understand is so you have i guess multiple different toothbrush sets no because... i'm lying i it's in the kitchen it's, in the sink. <laughs> it's always in the sink <laughs> it's the kitchen yeah it's the kitchen i lied all right oh I'll end it on this note to the hater who sent a comment earlier. You, what you're what you're seeing here, you're mistaking a receding hairline for just a massive forehead. And so, <laughs> so listen, so take that. So take that. All right, man. Um, oh, the band the band's name is Brushes Teeth and Kitchen Sink. <laughs> That's a great comment to end the show. Um, <sighs> well, bookmark it. This is the one we're sending for the awards next year. Oh, okay. <laughs> perfect. Thanks Best all. Best male host. Have a great week. <laughs> Best male host who brushes his teeth in the kitchen. Yeah. Adam wins. Hands down. <laughs> Bye.